All right, so I'm going to try really, really hard here to do a whole video about an action figure horse without making one single Mr. Ed reference. All right, here we go. If I make it through, I get it. So the horse we're talking about today is a Princess of Power horse, and you might be surprised that the Princess of Power catalog of horses actually runs pretty deep because, well, girls love horses. What can I say? They do. It's a thing. Kind of like how, you know, boys love firemen. And, you know, not that boy, girls can't love firemen and boys can't like horses. Never mind. The point is the Princess of Power line in the 80s was a girl's line and there were a lot of horses in it. <laughs> and, well, when you have one horse mold, you can easily make others. And just as the vintage line did this, Masters of the Universe Classics was built very much on a buck system. It's what allowed us to, well, more or less cobble together different characters and, in the case of the Griffin, even beasts by borrowing wings and body parts and tails and, you know, etc. from different characters and beasts that had already been tooled and cobbling them together. It really was one of the coolest parts about the Classics line that we had so many ride-ons, I guess you could say, and that meant that Princess of Power was going to get its fair share, or at least we really tried. You see, almost every character in Princess of Power has a dedicated horse. Like I said, in the 80s it really was a horse line, a horse and doll line. So getting to all of the horses while they were on the Master Spreadsheet, including the Crystal horses, well, the line really just didn't go long enough for us to be able to do all of them. And honestly, we were set up to do it because we had the horse buck. Once you have a horse, a blank horse, which is what we got from Swiftwind, you could do any of them. It was just a matter of, is there demand? And to kind of test this, the idea was to first do a second Princess of Power horse and debating whether or not to do the alternate version of Swiftwind, Spirit, or to do Arrow was kind of a toss-up. In the end, we went with Arrow because it was legitimately an original character, whereas, you know, Swiftwind and Spirit are the same character, you know, the Cringer Battle Cat thing. We did want to get to a Spirit version eventually, it just unfortunately never happened. That probably would have been next. Maybe Claudine or one of Catra's rides. Anyway, the point is... Shira had a lot of animals, and we wanted to really incorporate this as best we could in classics while the line lasted. Now, back in the day, the Princess of Power horses were sold both with their rider and without, so two different skews, whether or not you already had the rider, and obviously anyone can ride any horse, but like I said, the vintage line kind of had a horse for every character and a character for every horse. That wasn't a Mr. Ed reference, was it? Gosh, I hope not. All right, so in the animated series... Arrow, the horse of bow, get it, bow and arrow, was tan with an orange mane. Or tan? We're going to go with tan? Let's go with tan. Tan with an orange mane. And in the end, that was the toy we produced. And we produced Arrow as a horse, not as a magical unicorn or, or a, a alicorn or anything like that. Now, you had the pieces to put on wings. And, of course, that meant giant holes in the side of the horse because, again, we were using the swift wind horse buck. But... The horsemen and Bill and Terry, the designers, came up with these really great saddle plugs that plugged in to the holes to disguise it. So you could have wings like the vintage toy or no wings like the animated series. And while we're talking about the vintage toy, we should probably point out that back in the day, Arrow was blue. Arrow was the blue toy, or the blue horse. Again, there were, you know, so many horses, they all had different colors. Changed a tan for the animated series, probably so the horse didn't get lost in that, you know, kind of very bluish green forest that they, uh, the whispering winds, uh, winds, whispering winds that all of the characters lived in. So yeah, I could see how a blue horse could blend into the background, which is why Swift Wind was white with rainbow wings and Arrow was tan with orange highlights. Now, much like She-Ra's horse back in the day, the arrows, <laughs> the arrows, the colors also didn't match. So there was both the original pink release and then a later white release as Royal Swiftwind, which was kind of closer to the animated look, at least as far as the horse color, but the mane and the tail were not quite right, nor were the wings. So orange versus pink horse hair, shall we say. So we wanted to let fans vote when we did the original Swiftwind on which original toy to base it on, the pink one or the white one that wasn't quite the animated look. It was the royal look, you could say classic versus royal. But then it turned out we got rights to Filmation right in the middle of this contest, so we said, you know what, we're just throwing the contest out and doing the straight Filmation version, all with the, with the pink, uh, you know, horn and, or you know, horn holder and everything. So we could have done the same thing probably with Bo's horse and maybe done the blue version with the wings as a separate release, but 
you know, again, Bo's not as popular as She-Ra, so it made more sense in this case, instead of having a contest to decide which colors, to just go with the filmation look in line with what we already did for Swiftwind, and hey, if there was time, we could always go back and revisit and do the blue version, you know, maybe as a convention exclusive or something like that. So in the end, you really got a nice generic fantasy horse, which is actually kind of cool because there's kind of a demand out there just to have horses for different characters. And there's been a few toy lines that have made, ah, ah, I'm trying to say articulated, I said articulated, articulated horses for six inch figures. Boy, I really need my coffee this morning. So yeah, you know, there's quite a few options out there. And I really think Arrow slash Swiftwind do a great job, and, and Arrow in particular, because it looks more like a standard horse and less like a unicorn, well, there you go. All of the major characters tended to get their rides, and while not every character got a specific ride, I mean, you know, Beastman had the, the griffin, and King Grayskull got Battle Lion, it was great to get a true secondary character, and in this case, Bo, a secondary character from the secondary franchise, She-Ra, a dedicated horse, because a horse is a horse... Oh, damn it!